So our next speaker is uh, Guangyao Chi. And unfortunately, Guangyao's uh, internet is not doing so hot right now. But what we're going to do is play a pre-recorded talk. Uh, and then Guangyao is here to answer any questions that you might have about that. All right. So here is me attempting to share my screen. And I will do this. And I will share the tab audio. And hopefully what is happening now is that you all can see and hear this. So I'm going to hit the play button and hope that this works. Here we go. Hello, everyone. I'm going to today I share a story about how the Okaka brain solved the cost inference pr uh, problem during multisensory processing. We are living in the multisensory environment. And to create a coherent perception of the world, the brain has to combine noisy information from multisensory cues. And the cost inference is the process to determine why the multisensory cues come from the common cause or different causes. For example, when a mosquito uh, bites you and you want to swat it, basically, we received the proprioceptive signal as the visual signal. If a common cause is inferred, you will integrate these two signals and swat here. Otherwise, different causes are inferred, and you will ignore uh, the proprioceptive signal. And the key of the cause inference is to infer the hidden causal structure of the environment. How to solve this problem? Previous studies show that human infer the, the, uh, the causal structure by basic inference, which indicate the sensory evidence and the, the prior information to get the posterior uh, probability for optimal inference. And for basic causal inference model, it assumed two causal structures. And during the reference inference processing, it inferred the uncertainty about the causal structure. That is the posterior probability of common source. And your imaging study show that the progression of causal inference commutations along the cortical hierarchy. However, few was known about it at the neural circuitry level and uh, how the brain represent and update the hidden causal structure is largely unknown. Here, we ask the two key questions. And to address these questions, we conducted second unit recordings in macaques while they performed a, a causal inference task. During this task, the monkey was inferred to reach the target by his perceived arm. And we manipulate the visual arm to manipulate the disparity. Here, when we change the disparity, the inferred cost, uh, inferred cost structure was ch changed. And uh, the monkey had to Sorry, folks, technical difficulties. Give me a second. <laughs> the video will not play. It's, it seems the technical gods are against us right now. <laughs> Please bear with us. Oh, dear. All right, we are at 310. I'm going to try reloading the page. Hello. This on the inferred causal structure. Importantly, here we define the disparity as the real arm to the visual arm. And since we asked the monkey to reach the target by its estimate arm, so the drift could be defined as the real arm to the visual arm. 
uh, sorry, the target. And here is an example trial. It, this condition is called VPC condition. And besides VPC condition, we have two control condition, the VP condition and the P condition for integration and uh, segregation respectively. We recorded single unit in the parietal and the premotor cortex. Since this brain area is highly related with the motor sensory processing of body representation. To examine whether the monkey inferred the hidden causal structure, we first test the drift as a function of disparity. As we can see, when the disparity is zero, the drift is around zero. And with the increasing of disparity, the drift firstly uh, increases almost linearly. Then the increasing rate slows down and even has a decreasing tendency. We use a basin causal inference model to capture this behavior. And we found that causal inference model could capture this nonlinear dependence. And the uh, monkey used the mode average strategy for final estimation. And more importantly, the inferred causal structure, that is the posterior probability of a common source, the P common, is decreased as the disparity increased. And to investigate why the single unit could represent a, a causal inference, we calculate the normalized integration probability for single unit. And if the repeat is correlated with P common, we define this unit as a causal inference neuron. And the fraction of causal inference neuron in premotor is higher than that in prior cortex, and which indicates that the premotor could play a different role in causal inference processing relative to prior cortex. And to test it, we first conduct the population decoding analysis. As we can see, both premotor and prior cortex could decode the P common, but only premotor cortex could decode the P common during the preparation period. And with GPCC analysis, we found that there is a communication of P common from premotor uh, to parietal. As we can see here, it's a, um, it shows that the correlation between the PMC and IR5 is unbalanced and the premotor leads IR5. For now, we found that the causal inference neurons are distributed in premotor and prior cortexes, and only the premotor cortex could decode P common during the uh, preparation period and missing top down modulation to the prior cortex. So we ask, ask the next question. So how the brain update the hidden causal structure? We hypothesize that during the causal inference processing, the monkey will update the prior of common cells and uh, to match the causal inference environment, it will update the sensory representation. So we focus on two parts. One is the prior distribution of common source, and the other one is proprioceptive representation. And to investigate whether uh, historical information could influence kind of trials prior, we adapted a marker processing for sequential trials. And here, as we can see, the transition probability between common source to common source and uh, separate uh, 
sauce to common sauce is unbalanced. And at single neural level, we found that premotor neuron is selective to prior information during the reference period. And at population level, we found that only premotor codex to decode prior information during the reference period. Finally, we found that there is a trade-off between uh, inferred causal structure and uh, sensory uncertainty. Here shows an example session. As we can see, the uncertainty of proprioceptive representation in VPC condition is lower than that in VP condition. And uh, overall, the monkey's behavior show that the uncertainty in VPC condition is lower than that in VP condition. And at the single neural level, we found that the twin curve of VPC condition is disturbed relative to VPC condition. And only pre prior codex could update the sensory representation. To summarize, we found that the monkeys, uh, we found that uh, first monkey's behavior show that it uh, integrated the prior information and current sensory uh, uh, information to infer the causal structure. And then it will update the prior of uh, causal, uh, causal structure and update the sensory representation to match its uh, causal uh, environment. And at a, a neural circuitry level, we found that a promoter codex update the, the prior information of uh, causal structure and uh, represent the co-computation of uh, uh, causal inference and then top-down modulation to brother codex for sensory updating. And finally, I want to thank my advisor and uh, my collaborators, and thanks for your attention. Great, thank you. And I'm so glad that our technology worked and we were able to make that work. Um, so I appreciate everyone's patience while we got our technology to work. And thank you, Wang Yao, for preparing the talk um, ahead of time to make that, that work. So uh, we don't have any questions in the ask a question button, but I have a couple. So you're showing that this kind of prior, that the transition probabilities from uh, probability of, that C equals one to probability that C equals one is higher than going mm -hmm. from probability C equals two to C equals one, right? Did I understand that mm -hmm. correctly? Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm wondering if uh, you've looked at this in the context of any kind of one-shot learning or serial dependence effects uh, in your actual stimulus presentation, just because uh, uh, Dave Wozni and, and Brian Odegaard have shown some really interesting serial dependence one-shot effects in these causal inference structures. So have you looked at whether that, if that difference in transition probabilities is even stronger when you have that sort of serial dependence in your trial structure? Yeah, I think uh, probably, but uh, the, uh, in, in our task, the trial is uh, independent, trial by trial is independent. So is the uh, prior information is very weak. Yes. Right, but in it, there might be some serial dependence that shows up even though the trials are independent. Oh, are you, can you still hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, there might be some dependence that shows up, even though the trials are independent, like pseudo randomized, there might still be some kind of unintentional serial dependence that shows up, right? Yeah, but but we um, we didn't test that, but we test at the neural level. The when you when you come back to two trials, the it will it would won't decode the information in private cortex. Uh, yeah, sorry, in promoter cortex. So I think the information will decay, uh, uh, decay sharply. Great. 
I'm, I'm sure we, we can talk for longer, um, but I, I, we should probably move on to our last speaker. Um, so again, if, if you guys have any questions, uh, please feel free to use the, the ask a question button or the Discord server for offline communication. Uh, so thanks, uh, Guangyao, for being with us. And we will